Okay, this week we're going to um, ostensibly uh, focuses on uh, talking with the Arduino uh, in tandem with uh, more physical computing type of things. Uh, so we're going to learn how to get sensor input from the Arduino, get that data into touch, do stuff with. Um, but because that's it's not a, a huge topic, um, we're going to look at a few other kind of short tutorials, including uh, how to do a feedback um, top network, how to add shadows and uh, different types of lighting and some fog, and then some other uh, chops techniques. Uh, but let's look at the Arduino stuff first. So I've got this, um, this little webcam set up over here. Uh, before, actually, before we talk about um, the stuff in touch, we need to make sure we set up our Arduino uh, code properly. Uh, so you can see, uh, you know, this webcam's kind of blurry, but I've got an FSR, I've got a cute little button right here, and I've got a potentiometer. Uh, and so those are going, FSR is going into A0, potentiometer is A1, uh, and then the button is up here going into digital pin seven, okay? Uh, so with that in mind, uh, with all that stuff, uh, I won't go into the details of how that's uh, hooked up. You can, it's very easy. You can look up uh, just Arduino FSR circuit, and it's a very clear uh, diagram uh, for all those things. Uh, but in the code here, right, declare variables. Um, so this communication it, between the Arduino board and Touch Designer is happening uh, via a serial connection, which is uh, USB. Um, so standard, we. Um, give it a baud rate of 9600. Uh, there's a few different ranges you could give, but this number just needs to be the same as our serial in dat right here. In Touch Designer, we can see here baud rate 9600. So those numbers must be the same. Uh, setting the digital pin seven to be input. Uh, that's where the button data is gonna be coming in, the uh, button voltage. Uh, and then in the loop here, so I'm reading that pin seven and assigning that to my button variable, analog read pin zero and pin one for these two. And then this right here is, is really how we are um, organizing, this is how we're, we're sending the data uh, over to touch. And so actually I'm gonna turn this off for now uh, because uh, first thing, um, whenever, even like today, when, whenever I start a new circuit or whatever, uh, I make mistakes. I'm not like for sure if it's working or not. Um, so we always verify, we upload, and then we can look at serial monitor right here. Uh, and so this is receiving that data that we're getting from uh, these serial.print um, lines. And so here I can test also. Okay, I'm going to. Okay, check all these, make sure. Okay, so the data seems to be coming in properly. Great. Uh, so after I confirm that, then I could close that. This code is already on the um, on the chip, right? It kind of lives lives right there already. So I don't need the IDE anymore, uh, but we'll just look at it in a minute to, to understand like why this is formatted the way it is. So I've got the button value, a space, FSR value, a space, and then this last one says print line, uh, as opposed to just print, and then that's the, the potentiometer, and then a delay of 10 milliseconds, um, just to let the serial connection kind of just catch up. Uh, so when I do that, active back on, and then we should see, whoops, Come back. did I unhook anything? Okay, cool. So FSR is, is that middle value. It's going, it should be 1023, but like I said before, it's kind of an old one. So it's, we can see some noise also kind of leaking out into this value, but um, that's something we can kind of control, but kind of not. So potentiometer goes up to 1023, beautiful. And down to zero. Okay, cool. And then the button is this first one, just one and zero, one, zero. Also with the button, um, crazy amount of leakage. So when I hit the button, I see this like leakage over to my other two um, channels that I'm sending over here. So there's just some other um, gymnastics that we have to do to, to fix that. Um, you know, it comes down to the fact that we're dealing with analog 
electronics electrons are kind of passing through all this stuff all of my wires my board all my sensors that are fairly old uh and they're just uh they're just kind of leaking uh leaking some electrons here and there so so that's why that's happening um but i guess to see okay let's go some other parameters here um what we're looking at serial debt so to make this work we need to make sure that's uh, active on row callback format one per line uh, so this line this is where it's important this print line right here uh, basically it's like hitting return um, the way this is all formatted uh, before that printing the value it's adding a space printing the next value adding a space printing the value and then after that it's basically hitting return so that kind of finishes the line, uh, which is why uh, you know the serial indat is trying to display these values and it's just updating it whenever it receives that kind of line end uh, character from the device, from the Arduino. Uh, so by adding this you know, print line only at the end, that's how we're kind of keeping these together and, and with little like spaces in between. Um, there's no way to get rid of this message label on top, so I just went through select at and just selected row one. Uh, and then our friend convert dat, which I talked about in the other tutorials. Um, you know, by default, we see something like this. Oops. There we go. Uh, split cells at tab, uh, but there is no there's no tab character in these. We've just got spaces in between. So we just hit spacebar, and then that will nicely uh, split our three values up um, into different cells. So also, like if we didn't have these lines of code in our Arduino, there would be no space between these. It would just be, right, we would just see 0, 0, 0 with no spaces at all. And therefore, we would have no way to split them apart uh, with our convert dat or through any other means. Uh, so that's why we have, we write in these little spaces. Um, and then I end with a null and dat2. So Let's have this set right now. I don't have any labels uh, on these. Uh, changed the uh, first row and first column to both to values. So by default, it's usually something like it's usually something like that actually. Um, but I have three different columns, so a different channel per row, and then I have no names. So just make sure it's grabbing values, so we can see. Okay, great. Looks good. Button. Okay. Um, going through a rename. So I got the proper order, so that makes sense for me. Um, and then select chops. You know, this is really where you would you would shift things around. Um, you know, depending on where I'm sending these, what parameters they need to go to. Um, math and range is very common. Uh, so that all depends on on what you're sending it to, right? So maybe FSR. Um, we can imagine I'm going to control. I don't know brightness of something. I'm really by maximum. I'm getting about 750. So really here, maybe I could change that to 750. And then whatever that you know destination range is that needs to be, like maybe brightness. I want to go up to two, or maybe I just want it to go between one and two. Whatever. So that's that's arbitrary depending on what what you need it to do. Um, and then kind of have these back going through a merge, uh, which is fine. Whatever. Um, I mean, you could s send these directly from these, but um, it's kind of nice if it's all come from Arduino, maybe I would have just a single null to, and then you know this one operator can then whew, teleport over via chop references to as many different parameters as you need it to be. Um, for the button here, so you can see that turns one only as long as it's pressed down. As I release, it goes back to zero. Uh, we can also figure out a way to make this behave like a toggle though. Uh, so let's say I, I press it. Oops. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. I press it. Okay. I want a toggle on. Press it again. I want a toggle off. Um, easy way we could do that is with a count chop. And we saw before some limit. We can loop. I want it to loop between 0 and 1. Uh, so every time it receives an off to on message, which is basically whenever this goes from zero to one, it's going to increase the count. So press it once. Okay, now it went to one. Since one is my maximum, 
it's going to loop. Next time I press it, it's going to loop back to zero. And there you go. Cool. Uh, you know, if I had, you know, something like, um, let's say, multiple movie file ends, all going into a switch top, and there's that index parameter on the switch top, I could do something like, you know, I'm switching between different movies now, let's say, every time I, I press that. So uh, count chop can be very useful for a lot of different reasons. And that is, that is about it. Um, you know, you can hook up as many different sensors as you want um, this way. You just have to remember the last one has this print line instead of just normal print. So whatever, you hooked up, you know, like a photo cell, let's say, or whatever it's called, photo. That works fine. You just have to make sure, right, we declare photo. We have the analog read for that sensor. Um, and then once you do all that, then you'd have four different numbers here. And then the you know, same thing, right? You just kind of dat to rename and then select chop. You can kind of funnel it to different places with that. Um, so it is uh, it's arbitrary number of, of sensors you can hook up in this way. Uh, one last thing, I'll say that um, the serial connection is it can only be connected to one thing at a time. Uh, so right now, if we click on serial that, so that's active. So the Arduino is actively connected via USB with this serial in DAT. So if I tried, let's say I changed my code a little bit uh, and I tried to upload it, let's see what happens. Uploading and there we go, error. Uh, so, and I might read this error. Programmer's out of sync, and it's just like all this error stuff. And you might look at that and have no idea what that means. Uh, well, that's because the Arduino is currently connected to the serial DAT, but here the IDE software is trying to get in on that connection but it can't because it's already connected to the, the serial DAT. So if we wanted to upload something, uh, we'd have to deactivate that and then upload so that the, the software on the computer has this chance to connect with the board. It's done. Okay, now we don't even need this anymore. We can turn that back on and then it works. So that's something to be aware of also. If, if you had other any other type of serial stuff happening um, that would give you an error. So even if I had multiple, I mean, this this is gonna lead into a problem also. If I did like USB, okay. So that is like, that's a mess right there. Look at that. So that is just really complicating things. So you really, you only want a single serial in that. And that is gonna be the one connection uh, to the board and you have to kind of select and funnel it to different destinations based on that. Cool.